All binding agreements that a life insurance agent has a role in creating, the annuity contract must be prepared with care. There are restrictions that the investor must understand before finalizing his purchase, especially for a payout annuity, because of the commitment the investor makes and the restrictions that apply. The agent needs to be absolutely sure the investor understands what to expect and what he will receive. Many of the principles of the annuity contract are the same as the Individual Variable Insurance Contract, IVIC, discussed in the previous chapter. They include the attention to detail and professionalism required of the agent throughout the process of application, delivery, ongoing service, and claims. 7.1 Contract Life annuities and term annuities sold by insurers are insurance policies. Policies are contracts that form a legal relationship between the client and the insurer. Certain terms in the contract, called general contract provisions, can apply to all policies while other terms will be specific to the type of policy issued. Just as payout and accumulation annuities vary widely in their structure and purpose, so too will the contracts for each type of annuity be very different. A contract for a payout annuity is a commitment for a specified term or life. When the contract has been issued it is final, no changes can be made except to change the person named as beneficiary. A life annuity contract does not have an escape clause, the investor cannot rescind the contract to receive a refund of his investment. The annuity rate that applies to the premium or premiums deposited by the investor applies for the duration of the annuity. If an annuity rate has been quoted and used in an illustration of the income to be paid by the contract for an immediate annuity, that rate may be guaranteed for a period of time by the insurer. If there is no guarantee, income is calculated on the annuity rate in effect on the date the single or last of multiple premiums is received. A payout annuity application specifies that income payments are made based on the annuity rate in effect, the type of annuity chosen and the frequency of payments selected in the application. The contract confirms this information. The accumulation annuity contract has provisions that apply before the contract's maturity date and on or after the maturity date. It includes how interest is calculated and paid on the premium, minimum and maximum withdrawal limits, and how the contract is terminated. Amendments and addendums can be attached to a contract. These customize the contract according to an individual's particular circumstances or needs. An amendment may be used to waive a contract provision or to correct an error or omission. It is valid only when it is prepared in writing by the insurer and signed by the investor. As with all applications for insurance products, the agent must ensure all information is provided accurately to the insurer for the contract to be prepared correctly. The agent must be able to answer all investor questions clearly and factually. Uncertainty about any aspect of the future contract requires the agent to contact his manager or supervisor for clarification, or the insurer issuing the contract. Addressing investor questions as they arise means the agent develops a robust understanding of the product that can be used in future dealings with other investors. In this way, the agent builds a solid basis of product knowledge that, coupled with understanding investor needs, allows the agent to provide exemplary service. 7.2 Investor Requirements the investor has two general requirements for both the payout and accumulation annuity contract. Black small square to assist the agent by providing all required information for the application form to be completed. Black small square to fund the contract. Each form of contract also has specific requirements. Black small square the payout annuity contract directs the investor to select a schedule for payment with details of the financial institution and account where payments are to be made. Black Small Square The accumulation annuity contract requires its owner to make choices that center on its term for investment. 7.2.1 Application Form There are significant differences between the application forms of insurers issuing annuities. Some incorporate all required information in the application itself and the application is multiple pages in length. Other applications appear to be much shorter, but they rely on the agent to complete additional forms that must be attached with the application itself to make it complete. The wording of applications varies widely. Both applications for the two types of annuities, payout and accumulation, are very different and each insurer uses wording specific to its particular product. Often, an application includes definitions of terms that appear in the document. They should be reviewed by the agent with the investor to ensure mutual understanding. Like the IVIC for segregated funds, the annuity application form is completed by the agent and investor together, whether virtually or in person. 
The application may be provided online by the insurer or in a printed format. The investor must be accurate and truthful in the information he provides, it is the investor's decision to follow the recommendation of the agent or to make his own choice of annuity product. The recording of the information in the application should not be rushed. The agent needs to manage his time to allow the application to be completed with the investor in one sitting. He must not take away a partially completed application to fill in the missing details on his own. Every application form needs to be carefully reviewed prior to meeting with the investor, as it is being completed, and after it has been signed and is ready for submitting to the insurer. A mistake could be made while completing the application. When an application is in print form, a change can be made to correct an error, and both the investor and the agent initial the change as close to the changed information as possible. This is evidence that both parties acknowledge and agree to the change. A change to an online application can be made prior to submitting the document simply by deleting the incorrect information and inputting that which is correct. Consequently, the online application must be read with great attention to detail prior to transmitting in electronic format. An agent must never assume the application is correct, he must ensure it is by carefully reading all information including correct spelling of names and data copied from documents, such as a birth certificate. Again, like the IVIC, an annuity application could be completed by a person who has power of attorney, POA, for property for another. Legal guidance is required if the person acting in the role of POA decides to name a beneficiary. Neither the agent nor the investor has the right to modify, cancel, or waive any question on the application. Doing so can void the application. An application is not finalized until it is accepted by the insurer. As with the application for a segregated fund, a reason why letter is prepared and reviewed with the client when the application is submitted. This letter does not confirm that the policy has been issued, it paraphrases what the agent has learned from the proposed client, confirms what was discussed and when and sets out the plan of action. The letter must be easy to understand and brief. After the agent has reviewed the letter with the client to ensure its accuracy, he should make a copy for his client file and the client. 7.2.1.1 Registered or Non-Registered Annuity A contract may be issued for a registered or non-registered annuity. The contract owner and annuitant must be the same person when the annuity is registered. The registered contract is subject to all rules set by the Income Tax Act, ITA, for registered accounts which include Black Small Square the age at which income may be paid from the account. Black Small Square requirement for a minimum withdrawal. Black Small Square withholding tax on withdrawals. Black Small Square what happens to the account if the account owner dies. All withdrawals from registered accounts must be declared for tax purposes in the year in which they are made. A non-registered account is not subject to Canada Revenue Agency, CRA, rules for contributions, withdrawals, or tax deferral, however, it is subject to the rules set by the insurer issuing the contract. A non-registered annuity may be taxed in a prescribed or accrual, non-prescribed, form. While the prescribed form is preferred because the interest component of each payment is level over the life of the annuity, the many criteria for a prescribed annuity, some of which are described in Chapter 3, must be satisfied. 7.2.1.2 Naming Annuitant and Beneficiary This is a straightforward part of the application in which the owner names his choice for annuitant and, if applicable, primary beneficiary and contingent beneficiary. The agent must note the following. Black Small Square The owner and annuitant must be the same person if the annuity is registered or funded with registered savings. Black Small Square Two annuitants must be named in a joint annuity, the annuitant and the joint annuitant, also called the co-annuitant. The joint annuitant becomes the only annuitant when the first annuitant dies. The beneficiary does not receive any proceeds until the death of the second joint annuitant and then only if the contract is structured with a guarantee period. Black Small Square A beneficiary must be named in the application when there is a guarantee period unless the annuity is a life annuity with no guarantee period. When no guarantee period exists, a beneficiary is not named and cannot be added to the contract at a later date. Black Small Square When some, or all, of the premium is derived from a locked-in pension, all or part of the death benefit may become payable to the spouse instead of the beneficiary. In this case, the spouse's information must be provided unless the spouse has waived his rights to the benefit in a spousal waiver form. Segregated Funds and Annuities Chapter 7, Annuity Contracts 214 
As in all insurance contracts, the beneficiary can be designated as revocable or irrevocable. The owner must understand the restrictions on the policy when an irrevocable beneficiary is named. Foremost among these is the inability to change the beneficiary unless the irrevocable beneficiary provides consent to do so. A contingent beneficiary can also be named in the application. He becomes the beneficiary if the primary beneficiary has died before the annuitants. A contingent beneficiary is always revocable. 7.2.1.3 Owner Identification Requirements Identification requirements for the owner of a segregated fund contract are described in the previous chapter for compliance with the Proceeds of Crime, Money Laundering, and Terrorist Financing Act. They are also true for the owner of an annuity contract. There are two exceptions to identification requirements. Identification requirements do not apply when, black small square and immediate or deferred annuity is funded by a transfer from a registered pension plan or proceeds of a group life insurance policy, black small square the contract is registered. The owner of an annuity contract must also provide evidence of the age of each annuitant. If the owner is a legal entity, its identity must be confirmed by specific documentation. 7.2 Point two funding the contract funding for the contract takes two fundamental forms, a new cash, or equivalent, deposit or transfer of existing savings. Sources of funds include direct deposits from accounts and transfers made from both registered and non-registered savings, black small square personal savings or checking account, black small square bonds, black small square guaranteed investment certificates, GICs, black small square tax-free savings accounts, TFSAs, black small square stocks, mutual funds, and segregated funds. Black Small Square Registered Retirement Savings Plan, RRSP, Black Small Square Registered Pension Plan, RPP, Contributions to a Defined Contribution Pension Plan, DCPP, or Recognized Participation Amount from a Defined Benefit Pension Plan, DBPP, Black Small Square Registered Retirement Income Fund, RRIF. Black Small Square Locked-in Retirement Account, LIRA. Black Small Square Life Income Fund, LIF, or Locked In Retirement Income Fund, LRIF. Black Small Square Deferred Profit Sharing Plan, DPSP. Black Small Square Prescribed Retirement Income Fund, PRIF. Black Small Square Restricted Life Income Fund, RLIF. Time brings change. Once the contract has been delivered, the agent should view the service he can provide to contract owners as an ongoing activity to both ensure changes are accommodated in the contract as necessary and to be alert for other product sales opportunities. An outstanding service opportunity exists for agents who have clients with RRSPs that are maturing. These RRSPs may be held at the same financial institution with which the agent is affiliated or others. One of the options available to all owners of an RRSP is to convert the value of their plan on maturity to a term to age 90 annuity or life annuity to continue tax deferral. If an annuity is a suitable choice, as determined by the needs analysis, the agent has provided a valuable service to the client by presenting this option. Also, a client may have more than one RRSP that is maturing. The client may be best served by conversion of one RRSP to an annuity and conversion of another RRSP to a RRIF to continue tax deferral. Although annuities have been eclipsed in popularity by the RRIF, which is based primarily on investment in GICs and mutual funds, they are valuable as a maturity option due to their dependability as a source of guaranteed income. There is also no need for account management or ongoing decision-making as there is with a RRIF account. 7.3.1 Contract Delivery Contracts are not necessarily delivered in person by the agent. An insurer may mail or courier the contract to its owner. However, when it is possible and safe for the agent to deliver the contract, he then has a chance to once more reinforce the value of the product purchased and answer any further questions. 7.3.2 Ongoing Service Requirements for the agent, servicing the annuity contract centers on ensuring the beneficiary designation remains true to the owner's intention and, for an accumulation annuity, possibly receiving deposits and managing maturity of the contract to determine whether conversion to a payout annuity would be appropriate. 7.3.2.1 Change of Beneficiary A beneficiary may be replaced by another because the contract owner changes his mind or because the named beneficiary has died. The contract owner can name whom he likes providing the beneficiary is revocable and there are no restrictions on the contract because it has been funded by a transfer of locked-in funds from a registered pension plan. 
a change of beneficiary form is completed by the contract owner and signed to effect the change. When it is submitted, all previous beneficiary designations are revoked. The completed form must be sent immediately to the insurer. 7.3.2.2 Handling Deposits Deposits may be received by the agent as cash, a check, or bank draft. All deposits must be handled securely and forwarded to the insurer without delay. Segregated Funds and Annuities Chapter 7, Annuity Contracts 217 As discussed, cash deposits may be a transaction that falls under anti-money laundering legislation, proceeds of crime, money laundering, and terrorist financing act. The agent will be familiar with those rules and follow them closely to ensure compliance. The agent should provide a receipt to the client for any cash he receives as a deposit. Checks and bank drafts are made payable to the insurer. If the contract has been assigned a policy number, that number should appear on the check. The agent has to take every possible step to make sure a deposit is not stolen or lost while in his possession. It must not be left in a briefcase or purse in an unoccupied vehicle, for example, and it should be stored under lock and key in the office, even for brief periods of time. 7.4 Claims A claim is made to receive some or all of the funds held in a contract. The person who makes the claim is known as the claimant. The claimant may request help from an agent or the agent may volunteer to assist. A claim that is submitted properly, including necessary attachments, will speed up processing. 7.4.1 Claims Process The agent may provide the necessary claim form or information on Black Small Square How to Obtain the Claim Form, Black Small Square Documentation that must accompany the claim, Black Small Square where the claim form must be sent for processing. A claim form must be complete and include the claimant's signature for processing to begin. The agent may assist in preparation of the claim but, once the claim is submitted to the insurer, it is taken over by a claims representative and the agent is no longer involved. The representative issues a check or checks, or transfers funds as requested. 7.4.2 Types of claims payout and accumulation annuities may see a claim on death of the annuitant if a beneficiary is entitled to proceeds. A claim may be made by the contract owner for withdrawal or surrender of a term annuity or an accumulation annuity. 7.4.2.1 Death Claims Table 7.1 summarizes who makes a death claim in annuity contracts when an annuitant dies. Table 7.1 Claimant for Annuity Death Claims Segregated Funds and Annuities Chapter 7, Annuity Contracts 219 If the primary beneficiary has died prior to the annuitant, a contingent beneficiary may receive proceeds. If no living beneficiary exists, the claim is then made by the executor of the estate of the annuitant and paid to the estate of the annuitant. In provinces where they exist, probate fees could then apply since the proceeds become part of the value of the estate. No probate fees apply when a named beneficiary of an annuity contract receives the proceeds of the contract. A joint and last survivor annuity contract names both a primary annuitant and a second, or co-annuitant. The primary annuitant receives payments from the annuity for his lifetime. After his death, the second annuitant receives payment for life from the annuity. The switch is initiated when proof of death of the primary annuitant is provided to the insurer. 7.4.2.3 Surrender and Withdrawal Claims An accumulation annuity has flexibility that a payout annuity does not. The annuity permits both withdrawals, subject to minimum and maximum amounts, and surrender. When the accumulation annuity is cashed in prior to its maturity date, a market value adjustment, MVA, may be made by the insurer, which penalizes the contract owner by reducing the sum he receives. The amount of reduction due to the MVA is based on the amount of time remaining in the term of a guaranteed investment after the withdrawal or surrender, the interest rate at the time the investment was made, the current interest rate, and fees. A surrender can be made at any time from an accumulation annuity. A term annuity may also be surrendered. In both cases, a penalty will be charged by the insurer according to contract terms. A life annuity may not be surrendered once annuity payments have started. When a claim for surrender or withdrawal is made, it must in a form acceptable to the insurer. 7.4.2.4 Power of Attorney, POA, Claims A person acting in the position of power of attorney, POA, 
for property may have a special form to complete as a third party in respect of the account. Again, the insurer will provide the proper form for use. 7.4.3 Factors Affecting Claims When applicable, taxes are always withheld by the insurer according to the rules set out by the Income Tax Act when a contract is surrendered or a withdrawal is made. The amount received from the claim and how it is paid will depend on whether a cash refund or installment refund has been chosen to protect annuity capital for the beneficiary of a life annuity and whether a guarantee period is in place. A claim cannot be made against a life annuity unless a guarantee exists. The beneficiary is entitled to the portion of the contract not paid to the annuitant representing the period between the start of payments and the end of the guarantee or the difference between the initial capital invested and the payments made up until the annuitant's death. The beneficiary has no further claim after the guarantee period ends. Chapter 8 Group Retirement and Investment Plans Competency Components Black Small Square assess the client's needs and situation. Black Small Square analyze the available products that meet the client's needs. Black Small Square implement a recommendation adapted to the client's needs and situation. Black Small Square provide customer service during the validity period of the coverage. Competency subcomponents Black Small Square determine the client's situation, investment objectives, and investor profile. Black Small Square assess the appropriateness of the client's existing coverage in regards to his or her situation. Black Small Square analyze the advantages of segregated funds in comparison to other types of investments in regards to the client's needs. Black Small Square analyze the types of group retirement and investment plans that meet the client's needs. Black Small Square propose a recommendation adapted to the client's needs and situation. Black Small Square confirm the requirements that must be met to implement the recommendation. Black Small Square validate the appropriateness of contract amendment, renewal, and termination applications in regards to the client's situation. Black Small Square inform the claimant of the claims process. Segregated Funds and Annuities Chapter 8, Group Retirement and Investment Plans 222.